the truth about the Utah Jazz. Despite being on a 10-game winning streak and currently number one in the West, the franchise fails to get the attention it deserves. This video shows you if the Jazz are legit West contenders, and make sure you stay tuned to find out who Utah's breakout player is contributing to their 2021 success. If you're already subscribed, welcome back to D-Flow Hoops. If you're new here and a basketball fan interested in NBA rankings, predictions, and stories, welcome aboard. You came to the right place. Please subscribe and hit notifications so you're updated every time I post content. Now let's get into this. Utah's won nine of their last 10 games by double digits. And Rudy Gobert has been playing with an edge ever since Shaq implied that he didn't deserve his $200 million contract. But Gobert's not thinking about that, he's locked in. As after he dropped 29 points, 20 boards, three steals, and three blocks on the Mavs, he said after the game, quote, It's exciting, but it's really early in the season. Our goal is obviously to be one of the best teams in the league, but it's really to be ready for the playoffs. You probably know Rudy as the two-time defensive player of the year. He's also a four-time all-defensive team player, three-time all-NBA player, and he led the league in blocks back in 2016-17. But Gobert's lob catching and generally his ability to dominate in the screen and roll make him an underrated offensive player. Maybe he can't stretch the floor with a jumper, but to get Rudy a bucket, all the Jazz guards have to do is throw a high arcing lead pass into the paint, because after Rudy sets a screen, his lethal combination of size, speed, and finishing make him a constant threat for opposing defenses. Of course, he's not going to be a 20 point per game scorer like the four time champion Shaq, but I think the Diesel's hate for Gobert is completely out of line. This man's been the rebounding and defensive backbone of a Jazz team that's been a contender in the West for about five years. It's time for the Jazz to get it done though, and to live up to expectations, they have to make a conference finals appearance, which is something the organization hasn't done since 2007. But despite teams like the Lakers, Clippers, and even the Nuggets being favored over Utah to get out of the stacked Western Conference in 2021, the personnel around the underrated duo of Donovan Mitchell and Rudy Gobert will make the Jazz tough to beat four times out of seven. Last year, the Jazz were missing their second leading scorer, Boyan Bogdanovich, in the playoffs and they only had eight healthy players in total, but Utah only got one shot in Game 7 away from beating a Denver team that ended up getting three wins from reaching the finals. Donovan Mitchell broke Stephen Curry's record last playoffs for the most three-pointers made in a single series. In that postseason, he averaged over 36.3 points per game, and even though the Jazz went down to the comeback kids of Colorado, Dimich led the playoffs in scoring. Next to him on the wing, while Boyan Bogdanovich isn't having a career season like he was having before he got hurt last year, he is contributing a team fifth best 13 points per game. In their 10th straight win, Joe Ingles filled in for Mitchell in the starting lineup. D. Mitch was out with concussion protocol, but Jingle and Joe scored a season high 21 points, made 7 of his 11 deep range shots, and he also dropped 8 dimes. But Utah's breakout player, and a legit 6th man of the year candidate, continues to be Jordan Clarkson, who tore through the Mavs defense and dropped 31 points. Not only does the speedy Filipino provide valuable shot creating, but he's got experience playing next to LeBron in the finals, and he's clearly developed leadership qualities as his career's progressed. Jordan said after the win to Dallas, quote, We're trying to create our identity, getting up the floor, playing fast, defending, shooting threes, getting in the paint. The biggest thing we harp on is defensively. We're trying to have no slack on that end. Clarkson's currently the second highest scorer off the bench in the NBA, and right behind the spider, He's also been Utah's second leading scorer this year. Then there's the improvement of their 2019 trade acquisition Mike Conley. After the point guard missed a heartbreaking three-point shot, which would have put the Jazz in the second round last playoffs, he's bounced back in 2021. This year, Conley's numbers are up across the board, and most significantly better has been his shooting efficiency. Mike looks extremely comfortable quarterbacking Utah's offense, and he looks like the prime Memphis Grizzly version of himself. If the 33-year-old veteran can keep his impressive numbers going through the playoffs, 
the Jazz become that much more dangerous. On the perimeter, I mentioned Ingles and Bogdan, but there's also Royce O'Neal, who's an effective 3 and D guy, Georges Niang's another bulky small forward who only plays 12 minutes out there, but just adds to the stacked wing defense of this Jazz team. I think Utah's depth is going to help them to a top 3 record in the West at the very least and the star power led by an up-and-coming superstar in D-Mitch, a motivated Stifle Tower, and a prime-looking Captain Clutch Mike Conley will make them a top-notch playoff team, and of course, the breakout Jordan Clarkson is going to help their chances as well. But I want to know your take and our response to your comment. Are the Utah Jazz legitimate contenders this year? This was D-Flow. You're the best for sticking around, and I'll see you next video.